Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the updated picks for the NBA slate for Tuesday. We have so much news that we got. It's not even 3 o'clock on the East Coast, but a bunch of trades have gone down that have completely just shaken up the NBA and completely shaken up the franchises. It has a massive impact on today's slate with all the guys traded. Obviously not going to be able to play today, so it's going to be a pretty wild slate. We might get more news, so stay tuned to Twitter. I'll post some updates if we get some changes there. To have the DFS process, you can follow me. Um, on prize picks, use my code PROCESS for deposit match. I post my prize pick stuff on Twitter, uh, closer to lock, and then you can check out the website if you want to join us. But uh, let's get started here. Touch on the teams that we know we're going to need to focus on, at least a little bit. First guy, first team up is Portland. They shipped away CJ McCollum, Larry Nance, Tony Snell. They're already missing uh, Bledsoe, who they traded a couple of days ago. He's out, and a couple of other like guys are just out, so... You're looking at about nine guys on the bench, well, nine guys active for the Blazers today. You're going to need to get to a couple of these guys just in terms of the value. So, like, Nurkic is 85. He's a good play, I'd say. Just because Orlando is a big team, they're going to need to have Nurkic out there. He did put up 62 against them earlier, but uh, he's not a must play. If I was focusing on a couple of pieces from Portland, I'd start with the value, and first guy would be Justice Winslow, who's at $3,000. He should be in the starting lineup. Probably playing over 30 minutes because they don't have too many bodies uh, today. He's min price on the season. He's been about a point per minute fantasy wise, you know, just a little bit under that, probably like in the 0.95. I've given him like 30 minutes chance for him to hit 10x, which he definitely 10x or more is definitely doable at this price tag at min price. So he's the first guy that I'm going to plug into my lineup. And then you also have dual position eligibility on both C on um, both uh, CJ Ellaby and uh, Ben McLemore. Both guys should be in the starting lineup. Both should play heavy minutes, but they're definitely looking for a fantasy option. It's going to be Ben McLemore over Ellaby. Just had to pick between one between the two of them. Uh, McLemore on the season, he's been up and down at times, but he shoots a lot of threes. He's making almost 40% of them, which is a good thing. You know, Occasionally, he's going to run into some rebounds or assists. Now that he's going to have to play heavy minutes today, at least probably over 30, expecting to run into a probably like hopefully five or six peripheral stats um, and knock down some threes, get those bonuses on DraftKings. And then uh, my third favorite option would be Simons, just because he's 7K, he's expensive. But we saw what he did without uh, Lillard earlier this year, without Lillard and McLemore when he was on this hot stretch of 45, 48, 55, 46. Just a really, really good player. He's going to get a ton of usage going forward, um, probably for the rest of the season, because I don't think Dame will make his return if he's not traded. And you know, a 7K against Orlando, it's a great spot, good matchup for the Blazers. So at least get to a couple of these guys. Ben McLemore and Justice Winslow are my favorites. We got news out of Sacramento. For some reason, they shipped away Tyrese Halliburton, a second-year player who they spent a lottery pick on, was shooting over 40% from distance, 45 46% from the floor. They traded him away, packaged him with Buddy Heald to get Sabonis, who uh, is a good player, but he's already hit his ceiling. Halliburton's ceiling is still untapped, so that doesn't make any sense why they would get rid of Halliburton at this point. Not like they're doing anything. I feel like if they're trying to rebuild, you don't bring in a guy like Sabonis. But uh, Sacramento today, they're going to be without a bunch of guys. If there is no Fox, then the slate gets even crazier. If Fox plays, you know he's just going to take Halliburton's minutes, and you're probably going to have to look to, for minutes uh, for like for the player that's going to play Buddy Heald's minutes that he's normally playing. Uh, so that could be Davion Mitchell. If there's no Fox, then Mitchell looks really good. He's going to have to play a lot of minutes at the point guard position. You'd get uh, some added run for, like, Bagley if he's able to play. If not, definitely, like, Harkless would be a good value pick at 4000 And then, you know, Holmes doesn't, his outlook doesn't change much for tonight. Uh, but he could get some extra minutes if there is no Fox. And then we have the the uh, Pelicans, who they acquired, uh, CJ McCollum. Uh, they shipped away. Not no, Nothing of note except for Josh Hart, who's a good player. But I'll see if we can log down there. Their game starts at 8 o'clock. Still going up against the uh, terrible Houston defense. It's a great matchup for the Pelicans. Uh, but you got to still like Brendan Ingram. I know he's expensive on DraftKings, but not having Hart there is going to help him in terms of just uh, get some more, slightly more ball handling, more usage. Hart can get you some rebounds, so maybe some of those rebounds go to like Ingram. Uh, they probably will start both bigs again today. That, that might hurt Ingram's rebounding, but... He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, uh, like he has the last couple of games where he's racked up 24 assists. The matchup is excellent, like the best matchup you could have. 
um, in the NBA, and he's not even, uh, you know, he's priced appropriately, I guess, at 92, but he still gives you that 60, 65 point upside. So uh, I definitely still like Brendan Ingram like I did this morning. Indiana is going to be interesting today. If there is no Brogdon, you're going to get heavy minutes for like Washington Jr. and uh, Sykes at 41 and $3,900. You'll get Duarte, who looks pretty good at 55. And then we'll see if Isaiah Jackson and Taylor are able to play. If if not, if both guys are out, then Batadze and Brissett look like pretty good plays. Uh, but for right now, you don't have anybody that's a priority on the Pacers just because we're still waiting on a lot of that news. And last but not least, Brooklyn, uh, they are without James Harden today. So you're going to be looking to get to at least a couple of nets here. There's a lot of teams that are shorthanded today, so you don't need to you know, go all in on one team. I think you can kind of spread yourself out. Uh, the first guy I will plug in would be like Cam Thomas at only 48. David Duke's not been in the rotation as of late. We've seen Thomas play over 30 minutes back-to-back -back games. Um, he's played very, very well in both of them. And at least for tonight, until uh, Irving is able to well, until Harden is able to get healthy and until Irving is not playing at home. Uh, Thomas should continue to get heavy minutes here, probably 34, 35, so they wouldn't be surprising, and the price tag is very appealing at sub $5,000. So he's one. Another guy would be uh, Patty Mills at 58 just because he's still affordable. He's going to have the ball in his hands to get you some assists, and he's going to get a ton of usage and a lot of shots off, so hopefully he can get hot from distance. Uh, so I like both Mills and Thomas. Uh, Thomas is my preferred, but I can only pick one just because he's $1,000 less. And another guy that I like, just not not really having to deal with a lot of the trade news or anything like that, but uh, we got word that Gordon is out again as kind of expected, so Sengun should be starting again today. He's only $4,500. He looks great. Uh, he played decent minutes last time, only played 25, but he was in foul trouble. The game before that, he got almost to 30 with 29. So anywhere in like 27 to 31 minute range would be great for a guy like Sangoon who's able to contribute in all aspects of the stat sheet. He's averaging well over a point per minute this year and you give him like 25 to 30 minutes, you should be easily able to hit value against the Pelicans. And then my superstar today, you have a ton of studs to pay off for. One less now that Harden is not playing. Uh, but I think Luka still looks great going up against the Pistons. Uh, still able to pair, I mean I can pair Luka with Brandon Ingram and get Two guys that can combine for like 130, 140 fantasy points on their best nights. And Luca just got another triple double last game, but he didn't have to play much because he was in foul trouble. So he didn't play much of the second half. But you know, nobody can really slow him down on the piston side. Uh, so it should be the only concern you have is a blowout. But I'm not really hoping to project blowouts today. Hopefully, he stays at least close enough for Luca to play his normal minutes. And if he does, he should be looking at 70. Is possible, definitely possible and doable against the Pistons. So that's about it for the just a quick update for today. Looking to pair a couple of these value pieces on Portland, Mclemore, Winslow. You can get to another guy if you wanted to, but Brooklyn get at least to like Cam Thomas, maybe Patty Mills, maybe like James Johnson. Sangoon is still a great play at 45, and I still like Ingram just given how good the matchup is. So that's it for DraftKings. Let's touch on Fanduel. All right, so on FanDuel, it's a little bit of a different strategy. I mean, you're still looking to get to the value pieces on Portland and some of these teams. Uh, but, you know, you can't play Luka Utility like we can on DraftKings. Uh, so, and there's a lot of great value at point cards. So you might be looking to pay off for, like, Jokic or pay off for, like, Giannis or LeBron on FanDuel instead of Doncic. Uh, because at point guard, just looking at the mid-range here, you have so many good options here. Um, starts with Davion Mitchell at 57. Starts with definitely Simons at 65. Patty Mills at 57. You still have Suggs, who looks viable, at 55. And then going even further down here, you have Ben McLemore at 46, who looks like a good play. Uh, but on FanDuel, I'd start with Simons. He's too cheap at 65. You can play him um, at two spots, so should be no problem trying to get him into your lineup. Uh, shooting guard, still like Doncic at 11 too, but just looking in the mid-range here, there's so many good options. Uh, like, once again, Cam Thomas at 6K, a Brunson at 58, Patty Mills at 57. Uh, you can even go plug in, like, uh, Simons here if you needed to do that. But depending on the news we get out of Indiana, you can look to... I probably wouldn't play Washington at 55. Uh, but you have Ben McLemore at 46, who looks like a guy that you will probably like to get to. Not as good as he does on DraftKings, but still good enough at that price tag. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in 
I think Patty Mills looks better than uh, Thomas on Fanduel at least. They'll put in Patty Mills. Uh, small forward. Like both Giannis and LeBron, both guys look great. Uh, LeBron's at home. He's $800 cheaper earlier. And if, if you have that 800 extra, you can get up to Giannis. If not, definitely LeBron looks great at 10-5. Uh, but the real, P, the real key would be Baron Ingram at this position. He's only 78. Way too cheap, given how good of a matchup it is. Should get an opportunity for a double-double again today, hopefully. Um, just handling the ball more. And uh, the matchup is just so good. They should be able to put up a lot of points. It is one of the best games to target tonight for fantasy purposes. So Simons, Mills, Ingram. Uh, power forward. A uh, spot where you can plug in LeBron James at 10-5. Or you can go with a little bit cheaper option with like Bobby Portis at 62. Uh, don't mind getting to Portis here. We have about 67, 60, but Portis has looked really good the last couple of games, and uh, it should be a high-scoring game going into the, against the Lakers. Should be a closer game, hopefully. I'm um, not that you know, both LeBron and at least LeBron is there, so you can always try to keep it closer. Uh, but definitely like Portis at 62 is just really affordable. And then at center. Jokic looks great at 11.5 if you wanted to get up to him. Uh, but you also have Nurkic at 77. He looks better than his $8,500 tag does on DraftKings. And it's pretty easy to get to him if you wanted to. He hasn't he hasn't been like outstanding in some of these games. He's just been like good enough to where you're satisfied but not overly thrilled like 30, 39. You know, these games are not going to really wow you. But tonight, just not having a ton of bodies and a ton of guys that are going to command a high usage rate, like starting Ellaby and Winslow. Hopefully Nurkic is able to just dominate and get a lot of points, get a lot of rebounds, and uh, he does have the ability to rack up some blocks and steals, and hopefully he's able to have like a similar performance that he did against the Magic a couple of weeks ago where he put up like 60-plus on FanDuel. So I'm going to stick with Nurkic, even though we could upgrade if we wanted to or if we get some more news, but definitely these six leaves you with a good amount left to spend up at least for another superstar, and you still have a lot of value that we can plug in, but Nurkic, Portis, Ingram, Mills, and Simons, the five that I have right now on FanDuel, and that's about it. Just a uh, updated video for tonight's slate. Thank you for watching. Best of luck today. Follow me for updates on Twitter, and I'll see you all next time.